Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are interested in speaker design and improving sound quality, subscribe and join us. You may have asked yourself what the difference is between rectangular, square, circular, and elliptical horns. There is no significant difference between them. Someone says why? Their forms are completely different. Yes, but the horn math focuses on the numeric value of its cross-section area. It means we can get all horn types based on their cross-section area and simple formulas. If you note HornRisp software, S1 is the throat area of the horn, and there is no option to select the cross-section form. This tells us that the cross-section form is not the point, meaning its numeric value is important. It's better to calculate some cross-sections manually, and then enter the obtained values in HornRisp. These are the formulas for cross-section area of different types of throats. Pay attention to these simple relationships. Designing horns with different shapes is based on these relationships. Of course, we are not talking about directivity control and the role of these shapes in directivity control. I will definitely make a video about this. Start with hyperbolic horns. If you note the formula, ST is the cross-section area of the horn throat. The growth of the cross-section in every step depends on X or distance from the throat. We choose FC as 80 and T as 0.3 for all cross-sections. All the other parts of the formula are fixed values. Suppose every step is 20 centimeters. Based on the formula the last cross-section is 14,360 square centimeters. Now, you divide the cross-section by pi in every step and then take a square root, the horn radius is obtained. And that's all. If we enter the same values in horn risp, the result will be an 80 Hz horn, which proves the correctness of the obtained numbers. These are the cross sections of a 1.6 meter circular horn. For convenience, we need to design an Excel file for this so we can calculate all the steps with simple drags and formulas. We're going to create them on Google Sheets. After connecting these cross sections, the horn is formed. It is clear that the smaller the distances, the more accurate the created shape. Now, let's try a rectangular throat. Suppose a rectangle whose width is three times its height. If the width is 30 centimeters, the throat area is 300 square centimeters. And the frequency is 80 again by entering these values in horn risp. So there is no difference between rectangular and circular throats in terms of cutoff frequency. But their directivity control may be different. If you make the height small enough and the width is fixed, you can fold the horn and make a transmission line. I've used this technique in my transmission line tutorials. As you can see, the width is constant, and the height of the horn increases in every step. If we compare it with the circular horn, we'll find out the horn height is significantly changed for the rectangular one. To obtain the length of the square horn sides in every step, just take a square root. The square horn occupies less space, but it is not good for a transmission line. Now, it's try ellipses. Consider an ellipse whose bigger diameter is two times its smaller diameter. The throat area is... And for a 1.6 meter elliptical horn, the mouth area is... To get the ellipse sides in every step, we need to solve these equations. With a bit difference, it can be used for the rectangular horns whose width is not constant. And after entering these values in horn risp, the cutoff frequency is 80 again. You can try the mention process for the types of horns that I have simulated in my tutorials. Just use their own formulas instead of the ones in this video. We should know that for t equal to 1, the horn is exponential. So in this video, we learned two types of horns. 